Okay, now let's see how to import data from a, from a log file. Um, there are basically two uh, supported formats. It can be either be a text file or a CSV file. And first thing we do is you want to make sure that um, you upload your log files somewhere to your server so that you can then insert and, and specify the path here. Now, for, for demonstration purposes, I've already uploaded one file, which is called 2015.03. I think this is actually a weather display file, but it doesn't matter. It's just to show you how it looks like. So, I have this file saved on my server, and this is what the file looks like. Um, and what we want to see is, okay, here we have the header, and here are the fields. So, first thing we, we want to do is field delimiter. Field delimiter is simply whatever separates the different fields. Now, one thing you want to be very careful about, and I, I, I specifically chose this file because uh, you have several options here. You have semicolon, comma, space, tab, colon, vertical bar. So basically everything that could possibly be. However, in this particular case, you might be tempted to put a space, but be careful because if you look carefully, it's not actually a space. There is two spaces here. There is one space here. There is, again, several spaces here. And the reason why you have that is because it's not using spaces. It's using tabs. So if you see something like this and the spaces, and as you see, as you'll see later, if some, if, if you see some weird things happening, then uh, also try a tab. And as you can see here, it's not always a space. If you if you click space, then it means that it must be one space between each field. In this case, it's not 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 that not not that. It's, you can see that here we have two spaces. This is separated by tabs. So here we put a tab. Decimal separator. That's simply whatever it uses to for, for decimal numbers. In this case, um, we have a, a period, which is the the usual way, but in some cases, if you're, if you're from Europe, you might have a comma here. And in that case, again, you would have to s select comma. Now, obviously, there is one single thing, and that one, one problem that could arise, but I think that should never happen. That problem would be if you had uh, your field separated by a comma, and you, it would also use comma as a decimal separator. Obviously, in that case, it's not possible to use that file because the template has no way of telling whether it's a, it's a decimal comma or if it's, a, if it's a field separator. So you can use a comma for both of these, but make sure that you never use this. This will never work. So in this case, we have this header row. It simply tells the template if it should ignore the first row. In this case, we do have a header row. We see that this first row does not contain the values. So we just put in yes. And import type, if you watched the previous video, you already know what it is. It simply tells the template what it should do if it, it encounters a value that's already existing in your table, if it should replace it or if it should just leave it and skip it. So this would skip the, the, the importing. This means that if I select this, it will, if there is the same date and time, it will, it will keep the one that was there in the database and it would ignore the one in the text file. If I choose this, and it, again, it finds the same val same set of date and time, same row. It would overwrite, it would replace the one in your database with the one from the text file. So, just it like that. Show field numbers, just like I showed in the last video. We want to, we need to tell the template. This, this script is very flexible and it, it, it allows importing data from all sorts of different log files. So, you always have to tell it exactly what that file looks like so that it knows what it should do with the file, where it should find the numbers. So, before you hit the show field numbers, make sure you have the path here, the, the URL of that file, and make sure that it includes everything, including the, the last part, which in this case is the name of the file, dot text. So, we hit show field numbers, and we get this. Now, first of all, notice that it said that it loaded the file correctly. If you don't have anything here, then something's wrong with your settings here because it was not able to load it or your path is incorrect for it. In this case, this is everything is fine. And we look here and let's see what it has. Um, it's showing me the values for the particular fields. Yeah. 
And in this case, because I have a header row, it's actually quite easy because it inserts the header uh, headings here. The column headings are here, and it, here's the column, the field number, and here's the value. And it's the first value in that file. Look, 49.0, go back here, it's here, temperature. And if you did not have a header row, this would not be here. In that case, you would have to basically look up uh, your documentation for that log file to see which field number corresponds to which parameter. Now, first thing to do is we have to set up the date and time. Date and time in my file is, as you can see, given in separate fields. We have a separate field for day, month, year, hour, and minute. And we can also see it here, look, field 0 is day, field 1 is month, field 2 is year. Uh, one thing to note is that in PHP, the numbering always starts with a 0. So whatever you see here, this is field number 0, not 1. So be careful about that. This is always in PHP, numbering starts with a 0. So this is field number 0, this is field number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. So we go back here. Um, we see that we have day in field number 0. So first we have to specify what sort of date and time format we have in terms of the fields. So date and time in a single field. That's what we have here. Uh, sorry. That's, that's if you had one field for, and it would include both the date and the time. Here you have another option. If the date is in one field, time is in a second field, date in a separate field, and time in one field, date in one field, and time in separate field. It's basically all the possible options. And in this case, we have everything separately, so that's the last option. Everything in separate fields. Your month, day, hour, minute. So we click that. And now this, uh, you've probably seen this change. This changes based on what I s select here. So because I selected that everything is a separate field, it now wants me to tell it now wants me to specify, okay, which year, which field is the year, which field is the month, which field is the date. So in this case, I would say that my year, field number two. So I would put in two. Month, that would be field number one. Day was zero, etc. Um, in this case, it's actually really easy because uh, it will simply take that value and uh, use it. However, if I selected a different option, uh, let's say that um, I had my date and time in a single field. Now I only specify one field number. And let's say that it was in the first one, so it would be zero. And now I have to tell it what format uh, that date and time is in. So for that all, I will create a new file here, a new text file, just to show you. Okay, so let's imagine that uh, in my text file, I had something like this. Right? And then, and my field will be separated, let's say, by a semicolon. So it would look like this, and then I would have the temperature and etc. So in this case, we have the date and time in the first field, and we see that everything is in one field, because in this case, the fields are separated by a semicolon. Now, um, for that, you have to, you would have to say, you have to tell the template the format of this. And it uses the formats uh, used by PHP date formats. And uh, you can find those on the internet, uh, and I have I included a link here. So if you do not know PHP and you want to, you need to um, you need to specify this format here. So you click this link here, and if you scroll down here. This is the W3 schools. This tells you all the possible things that PHP accepts. So for example, we see that uh, D. Okay, lowercase D. Be very careful because PHP is case sensitive. So this must be in the correct uh, casing. So small d is day of the month, 0, 1 to 31. Well, uh, capital D is a textual representation of a day, so that's something completely different. If you specify uh, capital D for day, it will not work. J is day for the month without deleting zeros. And we scroll down, it's all here. 
capital Y is a four-digit representation of the year, so that's what we that's what we have here. That's capital Y. Uh, small y is a two-digit representation, so that would be if, if, if that year was just like this. And here uh, we basically okay. So let's say just for as an example, let's use this. Let's we have let's say we have this. So in this case, we know this is just for me. I'm just running to show you. In this case, we know that we have year. That's two digits. Then we have a dash. Then we have the month, another dash, and a day, and then we have a space, and then we have the hour, double colon, and a minute. This is the format we have here. That's the first field. Okay. So you would go through this site and you would you would look up the corresponding letters and symbols. And I already know it, so in, I know that it would be small y, that's for the letter year. Let's look again, and we, then we have a dash. Okay, so let's put a dash. Then we have the month, the day, the hour, and then we have the space. So we put the space, we have the hour, and then we have the minute, which is I in PHP. Be careful about that. M is month, I is a minute. Um, and then we would use this for, for this particular case. But there's one thing I want to emphasize. This has to match the format exactly. And one common problem, so you want to, again, make sure you, you have that right. If your time looked like this, in other words, you had the seconds included here. Even if they are always zero, it has to be here. Because it has to, that format has to match exactly what you have here. So in this case, I would have to put an extra double column and s for seconds so this this will this will import correctly this will parse correctly this string however if i had this and i wanted to apply it for this it will not work because we're missing the seconds and it will it will basically try to parse it and it will it will it will encounter this second double column and then it will look here and say oh what is this i don't know i don't know what to do and it will just not work so you want to make sure you get that right. If you had your if, if your data looked like this, the other options, let's say that this was a separate field, so you would have one field like that and one field like that. In this case we have date separate, time separate, so we would choose date in one field, time in second field, and now we would put the formats for the date, which in this case we would as we said we had Y and D, but Make sure that if you have a four-digit year, and you would have capital Y, and for the day, we would put what we had there. So, oh no, sorry, this is oh, sorry, never mind. This is the date. So here, this is the field number. So it'll be zero, right? If again, if this was a slash, for example, then we would put slash here. So that this is how it works. And then for the field numbers, it's similar to as I showed you in Weather Underground. You simply put in the field numbers and make sure you have the same, the units that are used in that file. So in this file, temperature, okay, it's here. Now you have to know yourself if this is Celsius or Fahrenheit because it's not, it's not in this log file. It's not here. So it doesn't know. But in this case, I see, oh, well, this value is obviously in Fahrenheit. So we put in Fahrenheit and humidity and we go on. We put all the values. One thing again, you want to make absolutely sure you have right is the cumulative daily precipitation. Uh, the, I want to emphasize this word cumulative. That means it's just the daily sum. It's not the, okay, let me just show you another example. If your rain looks like this, these are the separate, uh, date and field and time intervals. If your rain looks like something like this, this would not work. Because as you can see, it's not cumulative. It's giving the rain between the two intervals, but that's not how what these import scripts uh, assume. So in this case, it would have to look like this: 0.2. That would be 0.2. Then 0 0.4, 0 0.7. You see what I mean? It's getting cumulative, and then that means that at just before midnight will be the largest value. Of course, if you had no rain that day, it would be zero. But for the daily rain, the template will simply use the latest value for that day because it, it, it knows that it has to be the daily rain because it's cumulative. And um, it always zeroes at midnight. So at midnight, I would always go back to zero.
So that's just to make sure here. And rain rate, some uh, log files give this in um, give this in the value, either millimeters or inches per hour. Others give it in minutes. In the database, it's saved in, in uh, whatever unit you use per hour. So if you select this, that value would be multiplied by 60. And solar radiation. Um, here you can override the main settings. If for some reason uh, you just have some solar data and now you don't, so you disable the solar sensor, you can temporarily enable it here. But And then you hit test import, which uh, I suggest you, you watch the previous video about importing data for Weather Underground, where I showed how this test import works. And once we're done, you just hit import data, and it should import everything, everything from this file. But as I said, you have to use the test import to see if everything's correct. So if I hit it now, um, it's going to give me errors. It, it actually failed immediately uh, at the date and time field, so it did not even continue here. It tells me summary, there's a problem with the date and time. Nothing would be imported. Check the date and time format. And that's because here, uh, I was just showing you how to do this, and this that I just put here does not correspond to what we have here. Uh, so it simply ignored it completely. So before you hit the import data, you want to use this test import because this test import is, uses the same script, just that it, if it's okay, it doesn't do anything, uh, but it's just for you to make sure that uh, you see the result. You, it shows you what it would insert, and if that's okay, if you see, you read it, you go, okay, everything's okay, all the values seem correct, then you just hit import data. And then, again, make sure that you wait until the script ends. Make sure that you will see this spinner loading in your browser and you want to make sure that you wait until the very end uh, for it to finish so that it imports everything. And then once you're done, you can use a different file. And what I suggest, this, I, I intentionally use this and um, the import is executed in a new tab. And that's because then uh, this page stays open so you can simply uh, change if, for example, I also have April, so I will just put April. And assuming that all your the format of that file is the same, then you can just leave all these settings here for the field numbers and everything, and you just hit and I'll, again you hit import. I will import the new file, and you can go on like that. I put in another one and I import it, etc., etc. So that would be the data imports, and uh, we'll talk about reformatting in the next video.